afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Kremti News First at Four. I'm Tom Sherry. It's great to have you with us. I'm Jane McCarthy. A worldwide strike for climate change is happening in more than 5,000 cities over the next week. The global climate strike, as it's called in Spokane, is happening tomorrow afternoon. So before we get to that, we want to know what you think, should the local schools that we checked with, they've all got differing policies on whether students would get an excused absence to attend such an event. So do you think children should be excused from school tomorrow if they want to attend that protest? Let us know by clicking on the Vote Now tab on our CREM2 mobile app. In the meantime, CREM2's Tim Pham spoke with a student organization leading the protest locally. Well, this is a global protest happening in nearly 140 countries. The strike in Spokane, though, is gaining a lot of attention since Governor Jay Inslee announced his plans to attend. It's a generation of young people passionate about making a difference. Just last year, students in Spokane walked out of school to protest gun violence. Tomorrow, a separate group is pushing another issue, climate change. So people are leaving their workplaces, their school classrooms, and their homes to be here. Millions of young people are expected to take part in the global climate strike. Maggie Gates is with the Sunrise Movement, a student advocacy group. They are partnering with 350 Spokane to demand action and push for a Green New Deal. A Green New Deal would encompass green jobs and radically changing our infrastructure and our food systems to basically adapt to this climate crisis. The protest is considered a peaceful one. Each school districts have policies regarding student walkouts. Most require parents permission, but students should check with their administration for their policy. Gates says they've staffed volunteers to walk students from some high schools to get to the event. It's very empowering to come together and yell and chant about what you care about and it also helps create attention. Gates says this is set to be one of the largest student-led protests in history. One of those times in history where you look back years later and say where was I on September 20th 2019. Millions of people across the world are coming out for this day to strike. The strike will start here at the Rotary Fountain. They'll march through downtown and then end at the Spokane Tribal Gathering Place, which is near City Hall. Reporting in Spokane, I'm Tim Pham, Krem 2 News. Thank you, Tim. We want to now take a look at our polls, and as you take a look at it, it's sort of even. We've got 57% now in the no, they shouldn't, mm -hmm. and we're at 41% for yes, I'm all for it, and 1% says, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> We want to thank you for voting. Speaking of climate, Amazon now vowing to cut emissions to combat climate change. The company delivers more than 10 billion items every year using planes and vans and trucks. Well, to cut emissions, Amazon says it will use 100,000 electric delivery vans. That's starting in two years. And it also plans to have 100% of its energy use come from solar panels by the year 2030. Impressive. Meanwhile, Gov Washington Governor Jay Inslee will stop by Spokane tomorrow. He's expected to join activists at a climate strike in Riverfront Park. So you're seeing file video now of previous climate protests. By the way, more than 3,500 demonstrations will be held around the world tomorrow, with 800 of those demonstrations happening right here in the United States. Taking a turn to weather now, I was telling Tom Cherry that I woke up this morning, it kind of looked like Halloween out there. It was foggy and kind of eerie. It yeah. was, and then you're like, is this going to burn off? Because mm -hmm. you saw the forecast there, so yeah, I said it was going to become partly cloudy. Well, it did. Uh, we had the partly cloudy skies happen, and now we've warmed all the way up to 62. So, you know, previously this week, we only saw highs in the mid-50s. So, actually turned out to be a beautiful day. Winds are calm right now. You've got mostly blue sky, at least in downtown Spokane. Most of the rain is to the south and to the east of us. Even a few isolated thunderstorms happening in north-central Idaho. But you can see that the storm track is moving to the north of us. At the same time, it looks like we could see a weak weather disturbance move through the area Friday. Day. So I'm going to hold out for maybe a slight chance of showers, mostly in the mountains now. Uh, and you look at the current satellite uh, picture and you can see again, or the radar picture, and you can see we've got spotty showers down into the Palouse, Pullman, and Moscow, Idaho, a little bit south of I-90 in the higher elevations as you get around Micah Peak, uh, and again, a few showers to the north of us. So look for partly cloudy and cool overnight with a low of about 46 degrees, mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. Should be a nice day temperature-wise, though. We'll look for a daytime high of 69. 
and for the weekend 69 on Saturday, mostly cloudy and breezy and unfortunately looks like another wet weather system is moving in on Sunday, uh, Sunday afternoon, Sunday night. We'll look for a daytime high of 67. Very good, Tom. Thank you. OK, we're going to evacuate you. Come on out. More than five inches of rain fell in Houston, Texas in just the span of an hour today. Tropical storm Imelda is now downgraded to a tropical depression. It is causing massive flooding across Texas. Krem 2's Whitney Ward is tracking those conditions. Whitney. Good afternoon to both of you. Actually, uh, crews have rescued more than a thousand people east of Houston. The floodwaters there nearly 16 feet high. That's in Dayton. Some cars are completely underwater. Homes are flooded everywhere. And for some, it all brought back, brought back memories of Hurricane Harvey. We never flooded before and and we've had a lot worse rain than this and it's never been this bad. In our little section, this is worse is flooded worse than it did in Harvey. So the National Weather Service has issued a flash flood emergency for that entire area. The governor also declared a state of disaster just today. As for travelers who are maybe hoping to get away from the storm, hundreds of flights have already been delayed, many just downright canceled. Now neighborhoods are starting to look like rivers in a lot of different places. This is in Houston. Also crews from the police department were out there trying to evacuate dozens of homeowners as well as their pets. The police chief was going door to door to make sure that people were getting out of their homes and before leaving they also made sure that people turned off their power so as to prevent any injuries especially for first responders so take a look at this this is actually our sister station in Beaumont Texas more than a foot of rain fell there the newsroom at the TV station started flooding fortunately everyone was able to make it out just fine but first responders there in Beaumont got requests for more than 200 high water rescues one of the producers at the TV station there tweeted out everyone was able to make it out safely a lot of water damage though they were all then relocated to their backup facility. Experts say some areas though could still see up to three feet of rain before the week is over. So of course we'll continue to track Imelda as it continues to move up north. In the meantime for more information you can always go to creme.com. Jane, Tom. Whitney, thank you very much. Meantime, the CDC says more people are getting sick now from vaping. Yeah, the number of illnesses has now climbed to 530 and the death toll has grown to eight. Now, while officials can't pinpoint the exact cause of these sicknesses, most of the patients have reported using e-cigarette products containing THC. That's the ingredient in marijuana. The new report shows that three quarters of the cases are in males and more than half are young people under the age of 34. Until we know more while this investigation is ongoing, if you have health concerns, we recommend you consider not vaping and not using e-cigarettes. So we took a poll earlier this week asking people why you started vaping. And a lot of you told us it was an alternative to help you stop using tobacco products. So if you're in that situation, the CDC is recommending that you talk to a healthcare professional instead of vaping, and they can give you safer alternatives to quit smoking. Remember that solar roadway, that test site up at Sandpoint? Well, it is getting an upgrade. They were first installed back in 2016. Three years later, we're seeing them now peeled off for new changes. Mark Hanrahan is in the studio now to explain what you can expect. Hi, Mark. Hi, good afternoon, guys. They were first installed as a way to create energy. The company Solar Roadways says the goal one day is to replace as much pavement as possible uh, with these panels as a way to generate energy. So one of the biggest upgrades coming to those panels in Sandpoint is the wattage they produce. Produce. The new panels are designed to produce 50 watts. That's up from 36 from the previous version. The panels will also be replaced with a newly designed rubber base. The construction will take about two weeks. We first met Scott Brusa, the creator of those panels back in 2009. A decade ago, his solar roadway concept was just an idea. Well, he then got the attention of the U.S. Department of Transportation, who gave him a $100,000 grant. And since then, these solar panels have been gaining popularity. By 2014, they built the first ever solar parking lot. So coming up on our 5 o'clock broadcast, we'll hear more from Broussard about his latest efforts. For now, guys, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Mark. Well, this is nice. Yeah. A family <laughs> welcomed their dog back home after it survived two weeks in the Washington wow. wilderness. They say they were losing hope, of course, that Wilson would ever be found. Sounds like a Disney movie, but in our Inland North Best segment, Creme 2's Nicole Hernandez tells us people in a small eastern Washington town helped to bring him home. Welcome to Grand Coulee, population 1,042. Yeah! A small town that's big on coffee. 
so making frappuccinos is nothing special for this stand. But this specific frappuccino is, because just down the street lives Wilson and his family. He's very, very friendly and kind, and we just couldn't have gotten luckier with this dog. Wilson likes walking with his family and loves relaxing even more. You want to sit down? Huh? So when he went missing, it shocked the Groves family. The weather turned really bad. There was thunder and lightning and I screamed. And so I ran back inside. Wilson didn't follow. It was panic. So it was, I just felt helpless. Like it can't be, is this, he'll be back. This just isn't like him. He doesn't, he's not a wanderer. But he didn't come back, so the entire town started searching. I was driving um, in town one day and I saw her putting up flyers and I stopped. Including the coffee stand. One day they asked every single customer. For two weeks the search continued, and just as the Groves were about to give up, they got the call. Someone found Wilson. There was just not a better feeling. I just, he was crying and... He just came and I got down, you know, to sit in the parking lot and he just plopped down on my lap and just stayed there and he was smiling and just just happy to be be with me. So Nobody expected it, you know, him to be found. So when he was found, we were like, wow, that's really cool. Like we should do something. So they named this Frappuccino after Wilson. You just don't see that everywhere. You don't see it today. So this town has something really, really special. Here you go, down. And as for the pup, he is back to his normal, lazy self. In Grand Coulee, Nicole Hernandez, Crumb 2 News.